Scary Mysteries Twisted Twos, The Franklin Cover-Up, and Snowtown Murders. Tales of hauntings, murder, and scary mysteries. Every week, Twisted Twos dives into a pair of uniquely terrifying true stories that are worthy of a more in-depth look. For this week, we focus on the controversial case known as the Franklin Cover-Up and a brutal massacre that happened in the land down under. Get ready for Scary Mysteries Twisted Twos. Number 1. Franklin Cover-Up It was in the late 1980s when allegations of a child prostitution ring in Omaha, Nebraska first surfaced. This ring wasn't your local, run-of-the-mill prostitution ring, according to sources, but instead a sophisticated one involving prominent and high-level individuals. According to the story, the ring's pimps were powerful brokers who catered to individuals from the higher rung of the government. The two men central to running the said scheme were Larry King and Craig Spence, both also ran the Franklin Federal Credit Union. Founded in 1968, the Franklin Federal Credit Union's goal was to make credit available to businesses and individuals in the African-American community of North Omaha. Lawrence E. King, better known as Larry King, not the CNN news anchor, served as the credit union's manager for over 18 years. King was described as a flamboyant person, known for owning several businesses and living in one of the better neighborhoods in town. He's described as being tall and dresses lavishly. He is also seen traveling in his chartered jet, oftentimes with an entourage of young men. He later became a prominent Republican. In April of 1988, officials from the National Credit Union arrived on the doorstep of the Franklin Community Federal Credit Union and closed it down. They were acting on a tip from the FBI and IRS. Then, on November 14th, the agency, which oversees the nation's chartered credit unions and handles insurance for the deposits, filed a suit against Larry King. They found out the Franklin Credit Union assets only totaled $2.5 million, making upwards of $38 million missing. At first, it was allegations of embezzlement that first lured the eyes of the public and the government towards the credit union, but it wasn't long before reports of possible child sex abuse surfaced. Then, a speaker on the executive board of the state legislature in Lincoln, State Senator Ernie Chambers, said he had received countless reports giving credence to child sexual and physical abuse linked to the credit union scandal. Later on, the FBI acknowledged they also received such reports and investigated the matter independent to the embezzlement and fraud inquiry. Although little information was released about the nature of the allegations, the accusation said boys and girls, often taken from foster homes, were transported around the country, particularly in Washington, D.C., to service high-ranking officials by airplane to offer sexual favors in exchange for a reward. Aside from Larry King, the other main suspect arrested was Craig Spence. Spence was a Republican lobbyist and was also part of the Franklin Community Federal Credit Union. Later on, he openly expressed his fear he would be killed by the CIA and his death made to look like a suicide. True enough, Spence was found dead inside his hotel room and the coroner declared his death a suicide. Many of his partners would later be sent to jail for being involved in an adult sex ring. Allegations of child abuse, drugs, and pornography were first reported as far back as 1985. Among the first reports were from a social worker handling a case against Jarrett and Barbara Webb. Jarrett Webb was a board member at the Franklin Federal Credit Union. The allegations also brought forth a connection between King, the Federal Credit Union, and Boys Town, a nonprofit organization dedicated to caring for children and families. Founded by Edward Flanagan, Boys Town was created in 1917 and was one of the first orphanages for boys in Omaha. Boys Town went on to become a modern example of a public boys' home all over the world. What made the Franklin cover-up case so compelling and downright shocking is that big names were said to be involved. This included not just figures connected with the Franklin Credit Union, but also prominent individuals like a Nebraska court judge, the chief of police in Omaha, and many, many more. 
In fact, the allegation of involvement also extended to former President George Bush Sr., Dick Cheney, Barney Frank, and many others. The curious thing about all these allegations is that after a two-year investigation into the matter, along with several witnesses and victims coming forward, the court ruled everything about the case as a carefully crafted hoax. This is despite the fact people have pointed to an abundance of evidence against the fact. At least two plaintiffs, Alicia Owen and Paul Bonacci, willingly served time in prison because they refused to recant their testimonies. Paul was later awarded $1 million by the civil court after a judge believed his allegations of abuse. Meanwhile, two others supposedly withdrew their allegations because of pressure from the FBI. There was also another victim who never recanted her testimony, but luckily didn't serve any time in jail. The story of a cover-up soon rippled across. In fact, now hardly anyone in the mainstream are even aware of the Franklin Credit Union story and the prostitution ring tied to it. It wasn't until former Republican Senator John DeCamp investigated the matter in depth and uncovered the claims were legitimate. DeCamp was among those involved in creating a documentary called Conspiracy of Silence, which was supposed to air on the Discovery Channel in May of 1994. The documentary centered on exposing a network of religious leaders and prominent Washington politicians who took children and flew them to D.C. for sex orgies. But at the last minute when it was supposed to air, pressure from Washington politicians threatened the TV cable industry and they pulled the plug. Soon after, the rights were bought by unknown people who ordered all copies of the documentary to be destroyed. Luckily, there are existing copies of it online even though the quality isn't good, it does showcase crucial information the public needs to know. Number 2. Snowtown Murders Also known as the Bodies and Barrels case, the Snowtown Murders were a series of killings that happened between August of 1992 and May of 1999 in South Australia. It's considered one of the biggest and most controversial murders that occurred in the country, Three people were arrested in relation to the crimes, John Bunting, Robert Wagner, and James Lasakis. A fourth person, Mark Hayden, was convicted of helping dispose of the bodies, while several others, close friends and family of the group, had some knowledge or participated in the murders, but were never convicted or tried. The ringleader, though, was John Bunting. A charismatic yet callous individual, it was him who convinced the others to help him dispose of the bodies or to participate directly in the crimes. When he was eight years old, Bunting was beaten and sexually assaulted by a friend's older brother, so he grew a deep hatred for homosexuals and pedophiles. By 22, he began working as an abater and told people he enjoyed slaughtering the animals. In 1991, Bunting moved to Salisbury North in South Australia where he befriended neighbors Mark Hayden and Robert Wagner. Oddly, Wagner was in a relationship with a male cross-dresser with a history of pedophilia, Vanessa Lane, also known as Barry Lane. Bunting tolerated him simply because he fed information and gossip on possible pedophiles in the area. Later on, James, also known as Jamie Lasakis, along with his mother and half-brother, would live with Bunting. They, too, would be assisting in the murders. It was Jamie's eventual testimony, however, that would help put the others in jail. The first victim of the group was Clinton Tresize. It was in 1994 when his decomposed body was found at Lower Light, a small township close to Port Wakefield Road in South Australia. His body was found buried in a shallow grave, but his identity remained a mystery for five long years. According to reports, Trey Size was in a sexual relationship with Barry Lane. He was considered the first victim, having been killed on August 21, 1992, a full two years before his body was found. Police said Trey Size was killed with a blow to the head using a hammer. The second victim, Ray Davies, was living in the backyard of Susan Allen, also dead, although the jury was unsure if Bunting and company had anything to do with her death. Davies was killed by Wagner and Elizabeth Harvey, Lasaki's mother, while Bunting watched. 
Both Michael Gardner and Barry Vanessa Lane were killed one year apart. Gardner was a cross-dresser strangled to death by Wagner and Bunting. He was forced to remain standing until his death. Meanwhile, Barry Lane used to be in a relationship with Wagner and was killed by him. His toes had been squeezed with pliers before death and his body wrapped in a carpet before it was placed in a barrel. In 1997, Thomas Trevelyan's body was found hanging from a tree in Adelaide. He was someone with a history of paranoid schizophrenia, so he suffered hallucinations and thought the Grim Reaper was out to get him. Later on, police were able to determine he was among the victims of the Snowtown murders. He initially helped kill a previous victim too, Barry Lane. The following year, in 1998, Bunting and his crew continued on their rampage by killing five people, including Gavin Porter, a friend of Lasakis, Troy Ude, Lasakis's stepbrother who abused him, Frederick Brooks, a sister to one of the other victims, and the son of Jody Elliott, a woman whom Bunting was engaged with. The other two victims for that year were Gary O'Dwyer and Elizabeth Hayden. The latter was the wife of Mark Hayden. During this set of victims, many were first tortured before they were killed. Some were beaten heavily, gagged, burnt with cigarettes, had their toes squeezed with pliers, and also given electric shocks. The last known victim linked to the Snowtown murders was David Johnson. He was also the only victim to have been killed in Snowtown. The 24-year-old was lured to the local bank by his stepbrother, Vlasakis. Vlasakis had promised to sell him a computer, and once Johnson was there, he was handcuffed and beaten. Afterward, he was strangled using his own belt. Then, they cut up his body into pieces before placing them in a barrel. There were also allegations that they cannibalized him. It wasn't until May 20th, 1999 when police found the victim stuffed in barrels and hidden inside a former bank building. The drums were filled with acid. Initially, the barrels were held in different locations in South Australia before they were moved to Snowtown in early 1999. During that time, Bunting realized he was under investigation for several missing persons cases and decided to move the barrels to the bank vault. Three days after finding the bodies in the barrels, police found the dismembered remains of two victims buried in Bunting's backyard. The Snowtown murders remains one of the most terrifying serial murders to ever occur in Australia and possibly the world. So there were two of the most secretive and frightening stories around. The world can be a crazy place and Twisted 2's is sure to show you why. We have new videos coming out every Wednesday and Saturday, so please subscribe if you like this one. Thanks for tuning in and we'll see you soon.